Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in unison. How dear to me is our, your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it's a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him no one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, 
but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of will of flesh, or of will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is, on, it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Glory, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Um, so you may have noticed that our gospel text this morning is very similar to the text from last week. It's, it's what's called the prologue to John's Gospel. And these first 18 verses contain all that the Gospel of John will unfold. They are powerful, if I may use the word pregnant, verses and, and phrases and, and thoughts. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward God. I understand that as God and the Word existing in a face-to-face gaze. A gaze in God of pure being, pure love, pure silence. Contemplative, if you will. And then... This gaze birthed the cosmos. How could pure love not give birth? From this gaze, the cosmos was birthed. And not just birthed, but sustained and nurtured. And what the prologue does, and then the whole gospel, is it tells the story of how this love gave birth, is sustaining, and is nurturing the whole creation to its end. And in the 18th verse of the prologue, the last verse of the prologue, 
we have a picture that is that is the trajectory and the end of the story. The Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and then is the one who exists into the bosom of the Father. Let me say it again. Now, now our text translates who is close to the Father's heart. That's okay, but literally, this Word that became flesh lived and continues to live into the bosom of the Father. So, here it again. In the beginning, God and the Word exist in a face-to-face -face gaze. That gaze of pure love birthed the cosmos, sustains and nurtures the cosmos into the bosom of the Father. Now, this into is an interesting grammatical expression in the Gospel of John. It's very rare in Greek grammar. The Gospel of John uses it, as I recall, 33 times. And typically with faith or belief, we have faith into or we believe into, into Jesus or into God. And it's all about a movement. I want you to hear me. All creation is in a movement into God. A movement into the bosom of the Father. This face-to-face -face gaze in God, this face-to-face -face gaze of pure love. Last week in his sermon, Reverend Robert called it the invincibility of goodness, and I love that phrase, the invincibility of goodness. I want to tweak it just a little bit call it the invincibility of grace. Pure love that spawns the cosmos, nurtures it, and sustains it is grace. It's grace, in a sense, is love in action. And that grace will have its end. Nothing will stop it. So in the prologue, it goes on to say that, that in the creation that was birthed, comes light, and this light is light, and this light is love, and the darkness could not stop the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not stop it, could not comprehend it, could not overcome it. Now, I want, I want us to hear. The first century was no less dark than what we're experiencing today. This bold assertion of the Gospel of John, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. As bold as it was in the first century, so we need to hear it boldly today in the midst of what looks like darkness. There is light. There is goodness. There is grace everywhere. It, it is invincible. The darkness will not overcome the light. It will not overcome the gaze of the face-to-face -face gaze of pure love. So that's the beginning of John's Gospels, the prologue. And then there's a there's story after story after story that, that unpacks what this means and how it's expressed in the creation. How how this this love that creates, sustains, and nurtures is moving it towards its end into the bosom of the Father. And gosh, there's so many ways to think about this. I, 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 I just got to kind of pause myself for a moment. And I just want to dive into a couple of the stories in John's Gospel that want to help us. And the first one is the story of Nicodemus, the one I, I want to talk to you about. It's the story of Nicodemus when, when Nicodemus, a, a, a leader, a Pharisee, a, a, a leader, a teacher of, of the religious people, comes to Jesus and, and asks a question. And Jesus says, Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And I want to, again, I want us to think bigger than just the word kingdom. Don't get limited by that. You can't see the ways of God. You can't see what God is doing unless you are birthed 
anew. And all, we all know the story, and Nicodemus is confused, but, but here's the profound truth. The creation is waking up. It already exists in the bosom of the Father. It just doesn't know it. And so the movement is not necessarily linear. It's going deeper. It's the creation discovering its origin in the face-to-face -face game. And all of us, day by day, we're being invited to wake up, to see differently. We can't make ourselves see. We can ask. We can open ourselves. We can realize. I need to be awakened. To what? The next story we want to talk about is the woman at the well. And again, we know the story. The woman comes to Jesus, comes to the well where Jesus is, and Jesus is tired and he's sitting at the well. And so the woman comes to draw water, and, and Jesus strikes up a conversation with her, a conversation he's not supposed to strike up with her. And turns out the woman is a Samaritan. The woman has had five husbands. The woman is living with a man who's not her, her husband. And the woman has all kinds of, of moxie and, and strength. And she's engaging Jesus in a conversation. And, and Jesus cares nothing about what might look like he's not supposed to be in a conversation with the woman because Jesus is coming from this place of pure love, pure grace. And remember, Grace is unmerited favor. The woman doesn't have to merit favor. The creation never has to merit God's favor because God loves all that God has birthed. It's not possible for God not to love what God has created and is sustaining and is nurturing. That's where Jesus is coming from. And what might look like darkness all around, Jesus is just pure light. And he's shining the light on this woman and inviting her to receive it. And he calls it living water. Invites her to receive the living water. Here's what I want to say. Every day, we are offered the choice Choosing goodness, choosing the invincibility of goodness, choosing the invincibility of grace, seeing that it's everywhere, asking to be awakened to see it. It's everywhere. In the midst of the darkness, the light is shining everywhere. And it will not be stopped. Love will not be stopped. Grace will not be stopped. Goodness will not be stopped. This is the gift of Christmas. The Word became flesh and revealed to us who God is. The law came through Moses. Grace truth came through Jesus. Grace upon grace, nurturing us into the bosom of the Father. Merry Christmas. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God of true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life the world to come. Um, rejoicing in the love of God made flesh in Christ Jesus, let us bring the petitions of our heart this Christmas, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church gathered in this place, that we might make known the good news of God's presence in our world. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those lost in prejudice, hostility, and fear, and for all our brothers and sisters in any need or trouble, that God's light and life might gladden their hearts this day. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, particularly Donald, our president, and Doug, our governor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity of all people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our indigenous neighbors, that we may dwell together in respectful harmony. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and for refugees, and for children born in the midst of poverty and pain, that there may be room at the end for all God's people. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying among us, and for those who care for them, that God might bless them with the gift of peace. Today we pray for Shirley, Karen, Nancy, Carrie, Jerry, Lynn, Betty, Bud, James, Ellis, Tony, Michael Anthony, Phyllis, Brad, Aaron, Judy, Jay, Rita, Janet, Richard, Carmen, Christopher, Jan, Steve, Allison, Calvin, McLaren, Chris, Marty, Wynn, Peter, Marie, Diana, Jeremy, Indelicio, Phyllis, Pat, Brady, Howard, Mike, Kathy, Dean, Christy, Warren, Jim, Margaret, Kathy, Peter, Chris, Connie, Rudy, Marina. Lord, hear our prayer. 
forever. We commend to your mercy all who have died, particularly Manuel Garcia and Lorraine Bishop, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these things through our Lord Jesus Christ, newly born into our hearts. Amen. Amen. So, wherever you are, I encourage you to stand. And if you're with someone, I encourage you to greet them. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Amen. Greetings, St. Barnabas. Greetings, St. Barnabas and friends of St. Barnabas. My name is Jim Clark, and it's indeed my privilege and my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship this morning. So, I trust you will have seen the message we put out that we've decided for the month of January to return to recorded worship services, worship online together, rather than in person. And I direct you to our website for that message rather than repeat it now. And um, since I've delivered that message, a lot of you have reported to me that you do understand and that we're, we're wise and prudent to be cautious during this time. So I, I miss getting to worship with you, but I'm really grateful that we get to be together in this way. And, and I know a lot of us are learning that, that there's a lot of life in being together virtually like this, so, so it's good, good to be with you. Well, we continue our custom at St. Barnabas, praying with people who have birthdays or anniversaries or other special occasions. If that's you, I invite you to stand and let me pray with you, and I invite all our viewers and worshipers to pray with us. And by the way, today is the second birthday of our granddaughter, Naomi, so I include Naomi in these prayers. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they might grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in you and your goodness, now and all the days of their lives. And in these coming days, Lord Jesus, grant them grace to be awakened to live into you, to live into grace and goodness and love. In your name we pray, amen, amen. So I want to say thank you again to all those who made our Christmas services so glorious and wonderful and beautiful. What a joy we had worshiping, and really all through Advent, and, and then especially Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and, and the first Sunday after Christmas, we just had a glorious time. My heartfelt thanks to all who made that possible and all who participated and, and uh, watching and being a part of this thriving, loving community is a huge gift to, to all of us, so just thank you. Yesterday was our December food drive, and we had a spectacular turnout for it. Let me um, also point out that we had, we prepared hundreds of hygiene packs for um, COVID patients who are homeless. And so we, we had the opportunity to serve and minister to, to homeless people with COVID. And, and what a gift. Thanks to all of you for, for participating in that. I'd like to point out that Faith Formation, Zoom Faith Formation for adults uh, resumes on January 17th, and for our children it resumes on January the 10th, that's next Sunday. This coming Saturday is our January Quiet Day, I commend that to you, and we'll begin a new series on the church year. So. 
I'm really looking forward to offering reflections on the church year and for all of us who enjoy these Zoom quiet days to have a time of quiet, rest, prayer, and reflection together. This is a rich time. So January the 9th, 10 to 12, we commend that to you. I remind you that our yearly celebration is on Zoom this year. That will be January the 31st. That's where we conduct our business and we celebrate the, the year we just had in 2020. And you know, as challenging as it's been, there have been a lot of gifts that have, that have come to us in 2020 and especially the gift of community. So we'll have a lot to celebrate January 31st at our annual meeting. Finally, I want to thank you for your continued generosity. We, we were in, in our pledge campaign and the, um, the status of that has been announced and I apologize, I'm kind of stumbling right now. I think you can find the update on our pledge campaign on our website. We sent out a weekly email. I think it was in that. If it's not, it will be in next week's weekly email. But go to our website and you'll, you can see where we are with our pledge campaign. Let me say thank you so much for your continued generosity and support of our church. If you've not yet made your pledge, you can do it online or you can call the church office and ask for Katie and Katie can help you make your pledge that way if you want. So let us all take a breath as we do. I invite you to choose goodness. I invite you to choose grace. I invite you to choose love. And from the place of goodness and grace and love, let us offer ourselves afresh to the God who is grace upon grace, boundless presence. Amen. Let us now pray in the words Jesus gave us. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God only. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.